for those of you that speak uh, better English than I speak Spanish, which is all of you, um, thank you for having me today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm here to talk about a coalition that we have formed in the UK called the Coalition for the Energy Efficiency of Buildings um, that has designed and rolled out a number of innovations to catalyse renovations. And a coalition that we feel has applicability can be used potentially in European member states, but also needs to learn from the experiences of European member states and coalitions and alliances such as IUNA. But I first think it's important that we set the scene. The renovation challenge that we have comes hand in hand with an enormous opportunity. As Minister Teresa Ribeira talked about in an interview with the Financial Times last week, it's an enormous responsibility that the recovery funds represent. For us, the responsibility is to use these funds to leverage in the huge amounts of private capital that is required to meet the goals of the renovation wave. The largest climate investment gap of any sector is in buildings, some 275 billion euros every year this decade. So even if all European member states were to spend the 37%, the green 37% of their recovery and resiliency plans on buildings, there's still an investment gap. There's an investment gap. This is a slide that I made up. This is, don't take this as anything formal, but reading the literature that I think BBVA and others have put out, there were nearly 30 million homes in Spain built before 1980, before basic building regulations came in. And assuming that 10,000 euros of work is required, there's a, huge, there's a huge gap. There's a huge gap in the UK. The UK has one of the worst building stocks in, in, in Europe, if I can still say that. No, I can't, but sorry about that. Um, you know, the government needs to lend, uh, needs to find 90 billion pounds this decade for, for building renovation. There was some nearly 25 million homes in the UK that need to be renovated. So it's clear we have an investment gap. So what are the key components to start to fill that gap? And in our experience at the Green Finance Institute, there are really three key components. One is enabling policy environment. So from a European perspective, energy performance of buildings directive, recovery and resiliency funds are starting to show the way. We need a technical assistance piece. We need a quality assured, we need a supply chain. We need the people that are going to do the renovation, but also the lawyers, the academics, the architects. And we also need financial innovation, that private capital that we talked about. And so our aims for the coalition, the energy efficiency buildings, was to try to bring as much of these three components together. And as I'll talk a little bit about later, we feel like we are starting with some really good progress on technical assistance and financial innovation. And now we have some of the government piece coming in. We also have market drivers. I think over 30 European banks have signed up to the GFANS pledge. So this means that money is now needs to start moving in the real economy. Not buying and selling shares, but actually the real economy, money needs to move. And as I mentioned, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, which, depending on your perspective, is unambitious or ambitious, you can, you can argue that, but I would say it is showing the market the direction of travel. Energy, minimum energy performance standards, lending products for building renovation, mapping of market failures. Let's also not forget the co-benefits. Some of these stats from the Climate Action Network or the IEA's sustainable report. I think for every euro invested, the building sector manages to create the most jobs. Um, there would be a reduced health care fee, uh, fee. Sorry, I think there's some evidence that says that actually it can be a net positive. I think GDP can grow if we spend 275 billion every year. And last but not least, consumer attitudes. I think it was early this year that the European Climate Fund, the foundation, sorry, had a YouGov survey commissioned 
75% of people in Spain said they supported a law for minimum energy performance standards. So consumers want to see the same thing. So we have the what, the why, and we know that we need to leverage in private capital. So the question is how? This is not the answer, this is one of the answers. We think this has really good momentum uh, and applicability. And the goal is to mainstream financial solutions and market enablers. So there are three key components that we feel make this work. One is it's convened by a neutral party who are separately funded. So the Green Finance Institute was set up by the City of London and the UK government. We've now moved away from that, some of that funding. We're mostly funded by philanthropic funding, such as the Loudest Foundation, Quadrature and others. We're neutral. We are not competing with anyone. Uh, all of our work is totally transparent. You look at our website, you can see everything that we do. But we are staffed by, because our outcomes are financial solutions, we're staffed by financial professionals, people that work and have worked in banks. The coalition is set up in a pre-competitive space. So people come and there's, legally there's, there's no way you can take that forward from a competitive space. Everyone benefits from the conversation. Everyone benefits from the solutions that are identified. And it's set up across the value chain. So we have construction companies, insurers, landlord associations, banks, architects, academics, heat pump engineers. We have, I think, nearly 400 institutions now that are part of the coalition and part of the, part of the conversation. The first thing that we did, um, just as lockdown in March 2020, so this was started to be done virtually, is we, where should we focus? And the first question was quite quick to answer, which is the owner-occupied residential and the social housing sector is where the biggest area for us in the UK was to focus. And so we said, right, who are the financial decision makers? What is their profile? Are they mortgaged? Are they owning outright? How old are they? What are their motivations and trigger points for renovation, buying, selling, a, a bigger, better job, a new family, an extension? What are all these trigger points? What's their awareness and knowledge of the options available to them? And also, what are the geographic and socio-economic differences? Climactic challenges are not as, I don't think, as diverse as you have in Spain, but in the UK there are still climactic differences. Yeah, we have a levelling up challenge in the UK, which I believe is a conversation that's happening in Spain. But also, what are the existing initiatives and decision partners? Who are the people that are already doing some of this work? We, don't, we need to bring them into the coalition. It's not about reinventing what's happening, copying what's happening. It's about being complementing and collaborating with what's happening. And to that point, a lot of this work, you know, the Green Finance Institute convened, a lot of this work is led by the members. They have ownership of the work, they have trust. We push it along, we bring people in, but they, they work through it. So I think the owner-occupied sector was run by the Green Building Council in the UK. So then we, as a coalition, we then agree what the barriers are. This is, this is not groundbreaking. I think most of you, all of you will understand from this is owner-occupied slide, that what are the financial and the non-financial barriers? This did not take very long to come up with because everyone agrees and sees that your high upfront costs, lack of access to capital, if I renovate my home, will it actually save me money? How do I pay that back? These are questions that, but as a coalition, we needed to come up with them and agree that these are the challenges that we are trying to solve. And also, there are obviously non-financial barriers, lack of confidence, duration, hassle, etc. So these are, I think, challenges that are applicable uh, across a broad, broad geography. But as I say, the key point is to understand them and agree them together so that we can co-develop the solutions. The next stage is to go forward. And this is where I think 
the coalition has the most value. It's getting into the detail now. It's like, what does the law say? What is the, what, is the, what is the ability to do this? What is the ability to do that? And actually get people, pay people within the GFI to do some of this work to then bring that to the coalition. So we spend a lot of our time doing uh, the hard work, the detail, to then bring that to the coalition to get their opinion, to then change it, to modify, to then move forward. So we split our demonstration solutions products into two areas, market enablers and financial products. I'll just spend some time now on these. The green home finance principles, are, they were developed in conjunction with the Loan Markets Association. And they're a framework and guidelines that promote integrity in the market by providing financial institutions with a consistent and transparent methodology for the allocation of financing towards retrofitting, towards renovating works. It's trying to overcome that, if I lend consumer money, does that money get spent on a renovation? And how do I report that internally? Lender's Handbook. <clears throat> this is an educational tool. It's interesting. We found that not only are consumers, are people just not sure what to do, some of the barriers we, on the previous slide, but finance professionals didn't understand the technology, how much it costs, what, what carbon saving it might do, what efficiency there might be, you know, what was it self-consumption, what micro-generation technologies there are out there, how much does it cost, when's the payback period. So it's really about educating as many people as possible, particularly here, finance experts. You know, for many of us have mortgages and you've gone through the process where it's tick, 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 trying to change some of that process. Building renovation plans, not new. I know this is our framework for them in the UK. We're looking forward to making that better as I know a lot of countries across Europe are developing these. Metered energy savings is a, is a really key project that we're not quite finished on yet. It's about confidence. This is, this is a, a very important one. And it's about being able to say, if I, do, if I renovate in this way on this property, what is the projected energy saving? So not only does that give confidence of the homeowner, but it also gives confidence to the lender that the financial liability decreases. The energy bill goes down, and then ultimately you're able to then hopefully give them a better interest rate, you're able to keep less capital against that particular liability, and so that frees up you know, return on investment, return on equity, etc. Financial products. These are just some I wanted to highlight to you. Green rental agreements. In the UK, we have a cold rent, so the tenant pays the, pays the energy bill. I think it's the, it's the classic split incentive problem. We're trying to solve that. We are rolling one out next month. Transport for London, just like the metro line here, they have a lot of rented properties across the metro line in London. Uh, we are, they are going to roll out this tenancy agreement, and it basically says if the landlord spends 20,000 euros on the property, if your energy bill goes down by 50 euro, 25 to the landlord, 25 to the, the, the tenant. It's basically what it says, and that's a legal requirement then to make sure the landlord receives some of that money. Property link finance, learning from g and &E Finance, uh, the Europace project, we're trying to do the same thing in the UK. We think it's a fantastic idea, we're trying to understand this one ourselves. And then the two at the bottom are around particularly cities, local authorities, regional authorities. Um, we're trying to create a tool whereby to demand aggregation, you can see it as a, a big one-stop shop almost. It's a, a tool whereby if you can get a number of people on your street, in your area, to sign up for the renovation, costs come down. Quite simple, but you've got the whole portal does everything for you. It shows you what you will get, who will do it, they're accredited. Ideally, we're trying to get some public funding into that to give some guarantees, so that you have 10% default guarantees, the standard sort of commercial credit enhancement rates that you can get using public funds. But we're also trying to do this, the bottom one there, which is around crowdfunding in your local area. So getting people to invest one euro, a thousand euros into their local authority for specific projects. And those projects can be home renovation, they can be solar panels on the library, they can be various different projects. But it's 
Again, it's A, giving the local authority different income, but it's also making sure people in the area are now aware of what's happening, green projects. They are understanding this whole you know, energy efficiency dynamic. Hopefully, so there's a number of, of enablers and, and products. They, there's, there's no one solution. We're trying to create a portfolio whereby people, there's one or two things that are applicable to nearly everyone in, in the dynamic in, in the UK. The key thing that, that we feel we have some value as well now is we set it up. We had some funding from the government. We had some funding from City of London. But, but really, the government weren't able to commit to the meetings, to the roundtables, to the discussion. But we didn't want to wait for that. There's a, there's a lot of waiting that can happen with that, and I, and I appreciate why, but we wanted to move forward. What's happening now is the government is seeing some of the work that's being done, and now they're asking us, OK, what are your consumers saying? What, are, what, are they, what do they think about minimum, minimum energy performance standards? because we, we have those in the private rented sector in the UK, but not in the owner-occupied sector. They're very worried about stranded assets, um, which is, is a fair thing to be worried about. But also, our coalition members are then able to feed back. We have regular consultation. We're able to feed back to government to say, this is what we think. This is how you should either use some of that money, or this is how you should sh shape that policy. So for us, it's a win-win it's for the coalition members. You can see there's trigger points they're trying, we're trying to work on here, trigger points around if you buy a property, then get a rebate on that tax when you buy the property so that you do the renovation work. Can we reduce the tax on that renovation work from 20% to 0%, financial help towards the renovation? So for us, that's a key, that's a key part. And I think hopefully we can move forward with a lot of what's happening. So thank you for listening to me so patiently. I would like to summarise to say that you know, the time is now. I was on a call uh, last week for the, I think it was the Climate Safe Lending Network. One of the, the guys said there's less than, there's fewer than 3,000 days to 2030. The next generation EU funding it runs out in 2026 in terms of being able to take it. So the time is short. And I hope I've demonstrated that, that by working together, we can accelerate change. We can bring out new products, new innovations to market that will accelerate that change. And we're keen to pay a part in an alliance in Spain to come together with you all to try to work through this. So I'd love to meet you later. If you have similar challenges, if you if you've solved some of these problems, I would love to hear from you. So gracias a todos por su tiempo hoy.